gals, guess what? We're gonna talk Kitamura today. I'm at Phyllis Precision Medicraft with my buddy Johnny. We got this Kitamura behind us, and a lot of us think we have to fight for real estate, right? Real estate's expensive, and when we lower, we get smaller in our machines, we think, well, I'm gonna reduce the overall amount of torque and horsepower and machining capability of what I'm able to accomplish, right? We can't now run the harder materials. But I tell you what, that is not true in this circumstance. Johnny is running titanium on these Kitamura machines with a 12 pallet chain system behind me, which allows him to run darn near 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And thanks to Factory Wiz, he's able to judge that as well. So Johnny, thank you so much sure, for being bet. a part of MTD CNC. Thank you, thanks for coming today. Absolutely, so let's talk about, I know you really put some thought, and I know you've been doing this a long time, but you really put some thought into how this machine's gonna work for you. You yeah. had the guys at Allendale do a lot of tests to make sure this is gonna be successful. Mm -hmm. You could run titanium, that you're gonna be able to run lights out. How has this Kitamura machine helped you create success here? Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, it was really uh, post-COVID, and I don't know what happened, but we just started to think differently on how we were machining our parts. Uh, One-offs, changing tools, parts stop, changing parts, parts, it's machine stops. Uh, the machine just seems like it's always stopping. So we, we, we put our toe in the water on automation, which for us means tending these machines, picking up pallets, bringing them in. And also, rather than making one part at a time, we're making three to four parts at a time. Uh, with that and the pallet changer, it really takes us, if we're in a sweet spot on quantity and product, uh, we'll, we'll go right, as you said, close to 24 hours a day. Uh, and obviously, while, while we're doing all that, uh, the humans have waiting time. So we do other value add to the products that we wouldn't normally have a chance to do like deburring or polishing or cleaning or washing, where we would normally send that downstream. So not only did we increase our, uh, our capacity based on how many extra hours we get in a day, but we also are able to add more value to the product where we would normally close bottlenecks down the production line. So the machine is very flexible and it really affects not just the, the parts it's cutting, but the process itself and where it may have gone after that. And how important is flexibility to you, Johnny? I'll tell you, you know what? Talk about downtime and flexibility. If I was to come over here trying to secure a new customer and I knew I had to get in this machine to do prototype work, this machine would be down until I was done. Here in the kit, or any of the automated pieces of equipment, we have the opportunity to put away the production job for the day, bring down another pallet, tool up, manufacture that product, get it into QC, and still have two to three days worth of production run on our machine, change it out, and go. So we work in a day. We, if we're not finished that day, we put it away for the night. We make production that night. If we are finished, we move that part into QC. They can take two or three days to check it because we don't need it for two to three days. So not only did we cut all that, uh, the, the ability or the downtime out of the machine, we also created a situation where we're not waiting for inspection to run our next product. So really huge there, big time lowest price per part automation it's a world we're all trying to get into but that world's not possible really for a lot of the components especially that you make without precision so how important is precision absolutely. to you as well absolutely uh not only was the was the uh, uh the kit a good footprint for us because the technology we were kind of moving out uh that kind of got us here um we were able to drop in a kit and we if we remove one machine we got three so as you can see, we dropped in six. As far as I'm concerned, from the numbers I'm seeing, that's 18 machines in this little space of six. So we actually got bigger within the same building space because we're able to manufacture more products based on the amount of hours we run. We track these guys on the monitoring side by operator. We have an operator called Robot. When humans are not gonna be tending the machine or we're going home for the night, we press the Robot button. We just checked our numbers for November. We got an extra thousand hours of machining with no humans in the house. That's amazing. Not only on the cost side, but also on the capacity side. We would not have the volume of work we have from this customer who essentially owns these machines. We own them, but we put their name on them. If we, didn't, if we weren't able to do that, we would have lost half this work. So we're able to secure it all, make more, better, quicker, faster. It's just a beautiful thing. Guys, I wanna look at you watching this video right now because I really wanna reiterate, reiterate the significance of what Johnny just said. He wouldn't have been able to get half of the jobs that he's running right now if it weren't for the success of the Kitamura machines. Think about that. The automation, 
and the profitability that comes along with that thousand hours of robot runtime. I just have to reiterate how important that is to understand. So we've talked about flexibility. We've talked about precision. We haven't really touched on the rigidity yet because it's a smaller machine, but you're running titanium and it does have the rigidity that you need for your parts, doesn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, and you know, I think it's, it's, it's the machine and I tell you, my application engineers make these things sing. I mean, really, the code that they drop on these parts and how they drop it on. So we're looking at this particular part here, very small, uh, we won't call it micro-machining, but it's a very small part. The envelope in here is perfect for us. The spindle speed is awesome. We don't need a BT40 holder when we're cutting something that's this big. Um, so the envelope was great, and the envelope inside the machine was perfect for us. I call them sewing machines because when you walk down here, in the middle of lunch hour when there's no one here and they're all running, they're just printing parts. It's amazing. And Johnny, I know that you purchased six of these Kitamuras over the Never last thought we year. Would. That's incredible. But how easy was it for you and your team to learn the software? I think it was a package situation. We bought it in and then there was the installs and whatnot. We weren't doing laser alignment out of the gate and things to that effect. But after the first machine, we kind of worked all those bugs out. So really, we basically made room, kicked something old out the door, bought the snoop piece in. The install guys came on the Allendale side uh, and worked without a hitch. On, they knew what, 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 they were, what they were working on, and they scheduled it right through the end. As far as programming these machines, uh, really you and a, a few other of the OEMs that we deal with um, really took us from Pro Engineer, which we've been using for years and years, off into Mastercam. Mastercam, in our opinion, was just a superior piece of software and it really talks to your equipment very well. So if you can't talk to it, you can't cut precise parts. Um, one thing you won't see out here, uh, when we set up a job for the second time, there's no operators on these keyboards changing numbers and zeros and dots and points. We're, our setups are solid. We push a button, load the tools, laser set them, and we're off to the races. Well, you brought up Allendale briefly in that yeah. statement, but I'd like to touch on that a little bit what more. What a history they, there. They've been your partners for a long time, Yeah, guys, time, I mean, they? you know, we got into the medical device world back in the 80s, uh, and we're pretty much overrun by this company down in Jersey, not in this facility, but others, and we left all our other industries, aerospace, fluid control, nuts, bolts, all the things we were making, and went right into the medical side. Uh, we hooked up with Allendale. We bought our first hostess from them way back when, and really... Back in the day, before GD&T and close tolerances and third thickness of a piece of paper and all the other stuff we worked to, um, the Haas equipment was perfect for what we were doing. We were an instrument supplier, um, and, and the machines were just perfect for what we were looking to do. So we continued to buy them, right up to 52 pieces of equipment just on the milling side, not to mention the screw machines, the mill turns, and the other things we purchased from Allendale. So it's been a long history, and we must have at least 115 pieces of equipment purchased out of Allendale by now. Johnny, let's talk a little bit more about the five-axis technology itself because some five-axis machines can rotate more than others at angles and you're able to accomplish a part and if not a done-in-one, a nearly done-in-one based on these rotations, aren't you? Agreed, and I think it goes further than just what this machine's capable of if we back up a little bit. You know, we were XYZ guys for a while and then we went off into the fourth-axis technology where we would spin apart one way and then spin it another, what did that mean? We had to make a lot of fixturing and whatnot. So we were a little behind the eight ball when you talk about where we were with five axis technology opposed to others in the industry. Uh, we realized that, so what did we start doing? We started dropping these five axis yoke tables on our hosses. It's good, it works, but they're not integrated into the machine. This machine is built with the five axis in place. Not only does it move and wrist out like our yoke tables do, but it also actually will tip past 90 degrees. And I gotta be honest with you, it won you a lot of business because some of the others we were looking at um, could only go to 90. A lot of the spine products we're currently making here right now need that extra tip at 20 degrees so that we can get greedy and finish the product in one shot. Then we don't need that secondary picture. We pick our parts in the morning like little cherries off a tree. They're ready to be picked, deburred, inspected, out the department they go. So can't do it without the five axis. So we continue and I can tell you, we'll never buy another vertical milling machine without a five axis integrated into it. So that's really why you guys won the business here. Simple little thing, but made a big difference to us. And Johnny, we, now we've talked about the rigidity of the machine. 
because I know this part was run in a much larger machine, which was kind of a waste of space, and the capability to run titanium here is absolutely doable. So moving it here gave you that automation you need. And you talked to me before we hit record on these cameras about how many parts you run, whether it's a hundred or thousands, and the adaptability of this pallet chain system, it wouldn't really matter if you were running a thousand or five parts because you have more or less, when you think of change over time and part setup time, is equivalent to zero based on the machine is running while you're setting up in the pallet chain. That race right? part comes in and goes back out on the track, man. That's where we make our money, for sure. And that's kind of how we, we phrase it here. We're trying to get the race car out of the pits back on the track, and that's all about setup. So whether we're getting something in a tool crib or we're getting things ready to run before they're ready to run, that's what we're talking about, cutting setup time to zero. This, this equipment, this technology allows us to actually achieve that. Well, as a business owner and as I look around seeing dozens, if not even hundreds of machines around me, you are the type of person that is an expert at seeing where I can find benefits in the automation based on 10, 20, whatever it might be. I know you started doing this when you were five years old, running oh my around, God, yeah, right? Yeah, You've we... been in this your whole life. So to hear your story and the significance that you share with our audience carries massive weight knowing what you make here and knowing what you're accomplishing. Oh, and that's, that's, that's the biggest part. We are so blessed here, uh, not for the fact that we came out COVID the other side still in business, but the fact that we actually come, get to come to work and we cut metal for who? For people, for people that are in bed, for people that are on no pain medications and just don't have a quality of life. So uh, for me and my, my team here and the culture here is we're always thinking about the patient first. God's watching. Uh, so if we do the right thing for the patient, then our customer buys more parts. And that's just how it goes. And we get these people up and about. And I know I have many personal relationships with people that have parts. I know many people that are going to go and have them. And I know I'm going to have them someday. So to have that opportunity to actually help people in that way. And so many will never meet them. Uh, just is a great feeling when you leave the facility at the end of the day. And this machine definitely helps us achieve that. Well, Johnny, I, I can honestly say from the bottom of my heart, you are a good dude. I know so many countries are represented within this company, so you're very diverse as well. And I just had to say that before we move on to the next topic of discussion about the Kitamira. Had to get that out. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Culture's everything to us here. Uh, we're nothing without these people. Uh, these machines are great. But like I said, great application engineers on the engineering side of the business. And then these guys out here, these are kids, man. They're all coming out of college. And their eyes are just bright and bright and saying, you're really going to give me an opportunity to run this equipment? And they kill it. And they love it. And they're passionate. And they're learning something new every day. So it's fun to watch. Well, Johnny, your passion is infectious. Thank I you. I am honored to be here on behalf of MTD today to talk with you, to learn from you, to hear your story on the kit of mirror machines, your relationship with Allendale. Your wisdom is so vast, and it's a pleasure just to listen to you talk. So thank, thank you, you so for much. sharing this story Absolutely. with MTD's audience, and we wish you decades more of success, and maybe your children and their grandchildren will be five years old yep. running around with it as well, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Thanks for coming today, Tony. It was a pleasure.